many people were guided toward Christianity, and their confidence in Jesus Christ was strengthened, in great part by Padre Pio. Having received the Holy Stigmata, he was revered as a saint and carried great dignity and humility from his scars. Driven by his unwavering faith to Jesus Christ, he quietly bore much suffering and difficulty during his life. The times before his death still inspire surprise and respect. Unbelievably, Jesus Christ personally showed up and spoke to Padre Pio right before he died. Watching this film until the very last will help one to decode the enigmatic message Jesus imparted. Padre Pio first developed the stigmata with bleeding wounds showing on his hands and feet in 1918. Following Mass, one morning he experienced a wave of tiredness that quickly gave way to a strong sense of silence. A great presence enveloped him at that instant, eclipsing all other senses. Abruptly, a man he had seen in 1913 materialized before him, a mystery figure. But this time the person had side, foot, and hand bleeding. Padre Pio was immensely afraid of this sight, and felt an incomprehensible emotion as though he may die. Still, his heart grew stronger under divine intervention, and he did not die. Padre Pio knew his own hands, feet, and side were bleeding as well after the vision faded. The Lord had bestowed upon Christ the stigmata, the holy wounds of him, which distinguished him as a believable a confessor and a man with the sense of soul discernment. These wounds attracted people to Padre Pio. Via this miraculous phenomena, the Lord moved them away from sin and despair, so guiding them to the hope of resurrection. Perhaps the oddest in Padre Pio's whole life, he experienced events in the days before his death in 1968. Having defined his life for 50 years, the stigmata grew so interwoven with his identity that it must have been difficult for him to recall. A period before they were there, but the wounds on his hands, feet, and sides started to heal as Padre Pio neared the end of his earthly path. First showing on the morning of September 20th, 1918, these wounds faded gradually until precisely 50 years later, on September 20th, 1968. They vanished totally. Whether obvious or hidden, these scars had become second nature to Padre Pio. Five years before the stigmata showed up in 1913, Jesus first showed up to Padre Pio. One has to pay great attention to this. Padre Padre Pio reported in a letter to another priest. A troubling vision he experienced while still in bed on a Friday morning. When Jesus showed up for him this time, his look seemed different. Padre Pio's heart was profoundly broken seeing Jesus wounded and scarred. As Padre Pio watched, Jesus showed him a large gathering including many ecclesiastical authorities. Some were taking off holy garments, some were celebrating Mass, and still others were donning them. But what especially struck Padre Pio's eye and made him cry? Jesus' sad look at those priests. Jesus clearly was in great suffering when two tears dropped from his eyes. Jesus walked away from the priests and called them butchers, looking with contempt. But why had he called them butchers? The terrible reason was that Jesus was complaining about the way these priests carried out their holy responsibilities. Then Jesus told Padre Pio, My son, do not think that my agony lasted only three hours. No, the souls I have blessed the most will lead me to be in pain till the very last minute. These remarks expressed the weight of Jesus' suffering for mankind always. During his passion, Jesus kept sharing the intensity of his suffering and stressing the need of keeping alert during these crucial periods. Though he yearned for even a tiny drop of human compassion, Jesus felt abandoned and crushed by society's apathy. His load was exacerbated by the ingratitude and apathy of his ministers. He bemoaned how badly his love had been returned and how people coupled their indifference with contempt and incredulity. He also said that occasionally he was inclined to attack those people. But only the intervention of loving angels and spirits stopped him from acting. Following his stigmata, Padre Pio vividly detailed the events in his first letter. Following Mass in choir early on the morning of the 20th of last month, I saw before me an enigmatic man looking exactly like the one I had seen on the evening of August 5th. His hands, feet, and side were bleeding, though. The sight scared me. The feelings I experienced at that moment are incomprehensible. If the Lord had not intervened, strengthening my heart, which seemed as though it might explode from my chest, I feared I might die and most certainly would have. 
I realized my own hands, feet, and side were bleeding as the image stopped. Imagine the suffering I go through, practically daily, particularly from that evening until Saturday, the wound in my heart bleeds non-stop. The suffering from these scars and the grief it causes to my spirit overwhelm Father. Unless the Lord hears my dire prayer to be released, I worry I would bleed to death. In his charity, will Jesus bestow upon me this grace? At least will he let me escape the guilt these outward signals bring about. I will keep calling upon him until he shows me his pity. He will erase the visible marks that made me so ashamed. Jesus chose Padre Pio to carry his wounds throughout all the people on earth. Padre Pio suppressed these scars and the accompanying pain for the next fifty years. The narrative then veers off course unexpectedly. Following an especially taxing Mass on September 22, 1968, Padre Pio, feeble and tired at the age of 81, needs help reaching his bed from his fellow Franciscan brothers. Early on, on September 23rd, following confession and vow renewal, he managed to mumble the names of Jesus and Mary while clutching a rosary. Though he was feeble, about 2.30 a.m. it was observed that his condition had somewhat improved. Although nothing remarkable happened, Padre Pio, who had personally gone through several mystical experiences, appeared to be detecting something else. Drawing on his last will, he said, I see two mothers before softly uttering Maria and passed away. The nature of this vision still is unknown. He might have meant his biological mother as well as his spiritual mother, the Virgin Mary. The church itself is sometimes seen as a mother, although Maria, his last word, most likely referred to the Blessed Virgin, it is interesting that Maria, his biological mother, also happened to be named Maria. Claiming to have helped Padre Pio in his last hours, a mystic sister Rita Manella had been nearby. She said she thought the Virgin Mary, St. Francis, and St. Clair were in the room at the time of his death. Implying Padre Pio was alluding to the Virgin Mary, the... Whatever one's perspective, it is fitting that a man whose life was full of extraordinary experiences would leave this earth with a mystical vision. Mass celebrations of Padre Pio were well known and sometimes spanning three hours. For him, the Mass was the height of his day and the source of his inner strength, a complete involvement of his being. Starting at 3.30 a.m., his day consisted on prayer and meditation to get his heart ready for the Holy Mass. Padre Pio was quite affected when it came time for celebration. Realizing the great relevance of what he was doing, he became totally consumed in Christ's passion. His, his expression would change from pale to brilliant, and his emotions were strong. Sometimes they would cause tears to drop from his eyes. His loyalty was so strong that sometimes it caused body tremors and quiet tears. Every movement revealed his close relationship to Christ's passion, as though the space separating the altar from Calvary had been eliminated. Furthermore, adding to Padre Pio's long service duration was his exact attention to every element of the Mass, from the consecration to the rubrics. He approached every aspect with profound meditation, deeply invested in every action, and recited the liturgy with intense emotional resonance. He articulated each word meticulously, finding special meaning in the consecration and often spent additional time in adoration of the consecrated bread and wine. As his health declined in his later years, his masses became shorter, typically lasting about an hour. This serves as a reminder that the Mass transcends its apparent simplicity, transporting us to Calvary, where we encounter Jesus Christ our Lord. Yet the story doesn't end there. Throughout his life, Padre Pio witnessed the atrocities of the world, enduring the violence and hostility of two world wars. Despite these hardships, his devotion to the Mass remained unshakable, continually connecting him to Calvary where he met Jesus Christ our Lord. Padre Pio's devotion to the Virgin Mary was profound and steadfast. From his youth, he harbored deep affection for her, which only intensified as he aged. His love for the Blessed Virgin was evident in his daily routines. He would pray the rosary whenever possible, always. A fellow Capuchin once recalled how Padre Pio would wash his hands, but always made sure one hand remained free to hold his rosary. He once remarked that some people mistakenly believed they could navigate life without the Blessed Mother's help, but he recognized the rosary as a formidable weapon against the world's evils.
Padre Pio's daily rosary prayers were an essential part of his life. He even kept several rosaries under his pillow. On one occasion, when he couldn't find his rosaries, he urgently requested someone bring him his weapon. For Padre Pio, the rosary was much more than a simple prayer. It was a heartfelt offering to his beloved mother in heaven. He relied on her intercession during times of hardship, believing that the Blessed Mother's prayers could heal both body and soul. Padre Pio encouraged others to persist in their daily rosary prayers, convinced that with sincere devotion anything was possible. Padre Pio was truly one of the most blessed saints in the Catholic faith. His connection with God was so profound that God chose to share his wounds with him. While we may not be worthy of the stigmata like Padre Pio, we can pray to Jesus Christ for the strength and courage needed to approach the sacrament of Holy Communion and strive to improve ourselves daily. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus.